We're here at I-240 in Jefferson, and while the highways look pretty decent, a lot of your major city streets are still partially covered, and some of those sidewalks don't even get me started. I'm trying not to fall over. Yeah, Alex, Pond is right. This road is completely covered, and there are homes on this side of the water where I'm standing. Spent the day sifting through limbs, debris, rubble. The scuffs in the street and the broken car parts show this dip was too much for the driver. I'm gonna show you one thing over this way. These fall leaves are not gonna be doing any favors for these storm drains when the rain does start to fall. What led to the little girl's life being cut short? Well, it happened yesterday morning in Parkway Village. We know that one person has been shot and then taken to Regional One. They're picking up these programs for Jessica Chambers visitation. And again, things are just getting started now. We keep hearing people describe Jessica as this smiley, bubbly, outgoing girl. And her family is just now realizing they're going to have to say goodbye. I'm, I'm numb. Ben Chambers says he tries not to let his mind okay. go there. No, no, no. What kind of what kind of torture she went through. That's what's so hard, you know, that I wasn't there. On the day of his 19 year old daughter's visitation, Chambers asked you to pray for his family and the only people who can truly bring them peace. I want everybody to pray for our sheriff's department, you know, because I know they working so hard day and night, you know. Chambers works as a mechanic for the sheriff's office. He knows investigators are doing all they can to find whoever lit his daughter on fire along this country road last weekend. Right now, these are the only types of answers Sheriff Dennis Darby can give. I'm hoping for the time that we can call you back and we will and let you know what we have. WREG is hunting for the incident report from the night of Jessica's murder, but neither the DA nor the sheriff's office could provide one almost one week after Jessica's murder. In a couple weeks more, it'll be Christmas without Jessica and maybe without answers. So hard, man. It's just so hard. <sighs>
Terrell usually begins at the front door. Carter walks around back in case anyone tries to escape. Tell a car is missing. They're always looking for clues. In this case, there are oil spots from a car in the driveway. The suspect wasn't home. Just move on to the next one. More of the same at the next two stops. I don't think anybody's here. But... Finally, somebody's home. So who's Jonathan? Is that your brother? Yeah. Okay. But not the suspect. We ran into his mother outside. I never know he did nothing like that. It's the first time she heard her son might be an abuser. Terrell says more often than not, loved ones are the biggest holdup in investigations. Many domestic violence victims get back together with their abusers. Either they've made up in sheriff's department, the victim all stays here. or the, they'll cover for one another. So they, you know, where they stay at? There's not a lot of cooperation with the police. That might be the case here at stop number seven. You got anything on you? Terrell recognizes suspect Lonnie Whitfield. Put your hands behind your back. Who at first lies about who he is, but within minutes comes clean. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm not a violent person and she knows that she's willing to testify against this. So. Whitfield explains he got in a tussle with his girlfriend over her car keys. He broke her nail and she called police. They haven't had the time or money to drop the charge yet. I just made a mistake and I have to have to deal with it. And Terrell and Carter will do more of the same tomorrow. By then, they'll have at least 15 new DV suspects to track down. 430, 455 has custody of our prisoner. Can you show us some service? In Shelby County, Caitlin Alexander, WREG News Channel 3.